Hey everybody, what's up? It's Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. Now, I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time, you know, and um, I want to say shout outs to a uh, sad black woman channel. He hasn't posted in a while, you know. But uh, this video is basically why black women ha are have limited relationships. No, actually, no. Why? I'll come up with a title when I place it on there. But basically, man, this video is going to explain something. Because uh, someone was reading, a subscriber left a very detailed you know, comment and it got me really thinking about things and, you know, and it, it actually, you know, altered my way of thinking about this issue. You know what I'm saying? Because he brought up something amazing. You know, this subscriber brought up that, uh, you know, he said, why shouldn't black men date white women? And he said this, man. Because when a black man dates a white woman, he's still giving resources to the white man and the government in general that hasn't, you know, yet recognized him as a, you know, as someone worthy of equal treatment under the law. You know what I'm saying? And that was, that was deep, man. That was, that was super deep right there, man. I had me thinking and I was like, wow. That was, that was deep. You know what I mean? That was deep. So it got me thinking and it got me thinking, man. Now, why are, and it's been proven, it's all over the internet. Why are black women the least wanted women when it comes to dating apps and uh, the least wanted when it comes to multiracial coupling? And it got me thinking, you know what I'm saying? It got me thinking on what the subscriber said. And then, you know, got me digging deeper into my mind. And I realized that, you know, it has to do with a major, you know, play. Basically, what happened was this. And, uh, you know, you can always Google, Google it. You know, I might be wrong on the timeline. That's what Google's here for. But um, here it is, because, you know, this is all off the top of the head. Now, what happened is, in the 1950s, you know, this would decide basically why black women are the least uh, wanted on dating apps and uh, incapable of, you know, the least wanted when it comes to multiracial dating as well. And why black women can only... Yeah, actually, this could be the title. Black women can only be loved by black men. You know you know what I'm saying? That might be the title. But what happened in the 50s is that, you know, you had a dual attack by the government. You know, the government came into the household. You know, the government came into the household. And at a time now, at this time in the 1950s, and, you know, so on, since the 1800s, since freedom, the black family by percentages was always stronger than the white family by percentages. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the percentage, you had a stronger black family in America than a white family. You know what I'm saying? Of So... You know, of course, due to, you know, you're out of slavery, of course, you're in a country, you don't own any, you know, there's a lot you could look up to figure it out. But basically, since freedom, you know, since the end of slavery, blacks have been the strongest family in America. You know what I'm saying? Strongest family by percentages. Now, the government came with a dual attack, attack on dual fronts. And what happened is the government came with the offer of, it, it was either Section 8 or welfare. The government came to the black household and said, you know what, you know what, uh, you know, black mothers. And, and this is why I say a lot of black women in modern society. In fact, I'll get to it later. But 
basically the government came to the black women, let's say 1950s, and said, we'll help you out. This same government that's hanging, killing, you know, blacks, you know what I'm saying, not allowing any equal rights, segregation, taxation without representation, came to the homes of the black women and basically said, we'll help you out if you kick the father out. Now, rather than the black women by, by the highest percentages denouncing this and protesting this, you know what I'm saying? They basically invited the government into their house and they kicked out the father. You know what I'm saying? And now you got to understand, this is a black man, strong father. This is before the drug epidemic. This is, you know, this is the black man at its purest. You know, the, the best black man ever. You know what I'm saying? You know, so they kicked them out. And this, this, what this does by her kicking them out and choosing the rations that the government offered is that she kicked out that man from his house. And when he was kicked out, he can't see his family. He can't have any, any, any interaction with his children. He can't raise them. Then it messes up his image for running for political office. This single move literally killed the political potential of black men. You know what I'm saying? And of course, would lead to prison. Now, the second attack, you have Margaret Stringer. Margaret Stringer brought Planned Parenthood in the black community to basically increase the abortion rate in the black communities because the black families were so strong. They were breeding. They were having a lot of healthy, strong children. You know what I'm saying? Even during segregation and uh, even after the end of segregation, before it, whatever you want to call it, you know, before it. So, you know, strong families. And Margaret Stringer started bringing in abortion clinics in there. You know what I'm saying? Brought abortion clinics into the black neighborhood. And rather than black women completely denouncing this and protesting this along with their black men, because here's the thing, you've yet to have legal standing in the country. You don't have any political representation. You don't have any seat at the table as a people. So basically anything that comes from the other race of people should be seen as an attack. So Margaret Stringer successfully gets abortion clinics into the black community. So now you get the black family being attacked on two ends. You know what I'm saying? One end, the government comes in, oh, we'll give you welfare or we'll help you out with assistance if you kick the father out, a.k.a. if you, you know, separate and destroy the family unit, the government will give you rations. Then you have Margaret Stringer bring in some uh, abortion clinics, which should not have ever been chosen, been taken, because anything from the white authority at that time, the 1950s and so on, anything other than we're giving you political representation, we want you to form a political group to help you represent yourself and put your perspective in Washington should have been considered an attack, but it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? So the black women of old, you know, the black women of old accepted the government inside the home from both ends. One with, will help you out. The government will give you government assistance if you kick the father out. The other was Margaret Stringer with the abortion clinics, you know what I'm saying? So, the, you know, so with the black women of old, the older black women accepting the government inside their home, the same government that's, you know, using authority to oppress and kill their black husbands, their uncles, their, you know, I mean, it's always been about killing the men, you know, you cut off the top of the head, the men. So now, you know, this was the two attacks, you know, they, this wasn't the final attack. This wasn't the nail in the coffin. You know what I'm saying? So now, and, and I'll get to the black man part soon enough, but uh, where he kind of played a role in it.
But okay, now we fast forward a little. Now, the white feminists, this is where you put the nail in the coffin for black women when it comes to their availability and their right to have a strong relationship with even other races. What happened is the black women bought into the white feminist without seeing what's coming, you know. They didn't see the attack coming when the government came in to offer government assistance by kicking out the man out the house. They didn't see the attack coming when Margaret Stringer started Planned Parenthood and planting abortion clinics in a neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, amongst black people to basically decrease the population and kill them. Now, this is the nail in the coffin, and this is what would make black women... Even till today, the pets or the guard dogs of the white feminist. Now, this is how it happened. Now, the white feminist had a feminist march. They had a march, you know what I'm saying? And rather, instead of the black women looking at it and saying, you know, this isn't our fight. This isn't our fight because we don't even have rights yet as people. We're not recognized as black people and don't yet have support and justice under the law. You know what I'm saying? They don't have any support or justice, equal, equal rights to justice yet. But the black women march with the white feminists, and they march with them. So they add, now, now think about it. These white women already have equality under the law. And, and have used it to abuse, you know, Emma Till got killed because a white woman falsified a whistle. And, you know, even before then, you know, white women been getting black men killed, Tuskegee, I mean, uh, Black Wall Street. It's been happening where they use their power and political connection to the white man who's the majority of political representation to basically kill black men and kill black people. So instead of the black women of old saying, you know what, we're not marching with the white feminists, you know, this, we're not marching with them because we don't have rights yet as a people, as black people, we don't have rights. This is why if you go look at when Ice Cube was talking to those women, you know what I'm saying, about, you know, bringing in something to get black people recognized and helped by the government, they said, oh, that's not our problem. We're black women. We're not the same as black men. You get what I'm saying? You could go look that up, but, but let's get back to the story. So the black women marched with the white feminist, and what they didn't see is that they were only advancing the white feminist representation, not them, because the white feminists already have their white men in the political system. So if anyone can network and obtain more power, it's going to be the white women, not the black women. And what's going to happen is basically the black women will get something after the white women get something and something and not really a lot. So what the black women did is they marched on this woman's rights protest with the white feminist when they don't even have rights to exist or are recognized under the government. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I gotta remember this word, affirmative. Affirmative. Yeah, yeah. So they don't have rights as a people yet. So they march with this these white women on women rights, and you know, when they don't have rights as a people yet, you know, they they don't have representation during taxation. You know, police are killing and uh, you know abusing authority. Blah, blah, blah. So they march with these white feminists. And, you know, this basically, when they marched with them and got these white feminists more power, they basically ended the black community. It, it was ended. Political representation, It the black family was basically done. Because what the white feminists did is they had it set up where with affirmative, you know, let, let's say, you know, I might be pushing a little forward, civil rights, whatever, but because the black women were in tow with the white feminist, you know, and they enacted a uh, civil rights with, uh, you know, later on, of course, you would get eventually affirmative action where they would hire the
the black woman and she would count as two things, a black woman and a black person. Now, you got to understand, these are certain jobs where they're hired. It's not like they're connected to political office and high levels of power. It's basically those affirmative action type jobs and situations where we can hire, you know, if we can have a few blacks, we'll do good. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll, it's affirmative action. Just get a few. You know, and I plan to dive deeper into civil rights with another video, but uh, I'm just sticking on the uh, war. You know, the, why you have such a disparity between black men and black women. So when the black women, you know, teamed up with the white feminists, the white feminists, of course, gave them a few helps here and there, little help here and there. I mean, you know, black men were always the ones that were killed more. So what happens is, you know, now you have abortion, Margaret Stringer, you know what I'm saying, Planned Parenthood, then you have government assistant programs where they want to kick out the father and they'll give rations, you know, little government assistance here and there for survival. So you basically have it where you destroy the black man. So the black man no longer has any political power because, you know, he can't expand through his family and have a strong family to build with because now there's the risk that at any time, if his woman feels threatened, and this is why I tell a lot of men in the manos manosphere that, dude, the manosphere was started with the black man. The manosphere is, you know, it's called the black manosphere because, you know, uh, when it deals with mostly what black men are going through, and then when it eventually spreads, it's just the manosphere. So the root of the manosphere is the black manosphere. So black men were the first ones attacked. Now, with the government in place where they'll only give assistance to the woman, if the father's out, you have black men now on a leash. Because if their woman feels any type of way, she can get the government on her side. The same government that's abusing its authority where the cops are pulling over black men, framing them, putting them in prison. So now the black men are basically being attacked on all fronts they're being attacked by the government being attacked by the their own women they're being attacked by the white feminist the black men are basically surrounded you know what i'm saying and the problem the problem and this is where the black men failed you know a, a proper a proper response was not utilized and that proper response for the black men when the black women were taking government assistance and kicking the fathers out, when the black women didn't protest, you know, um, you know, Margaret Stringer bringing in abortion clinics, when the black women marched with the white feminists, and you had some cowardly black men marching with them too, but what the black man should have done was should have striked, should have had a strike and protested that. From now on, we're not dealing with black women because they're not placing being black as priority and as the number one, you know, issue at hand. So had the black men openly protested that and said, we're done, we're not dealing with you anymore, we'll marry outside of our race or, you know what I'm saying, we'll literally, you know, uh, go get a woman back in Africa or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or we'll go overseas. You know, had the black men protested with their seed, we would not be where we are, you know, or black men now. So that was a major issue on the black men's front. That's why I tell people with the with the you know, Black Panthers, it didn't matter. It it was all it was destined to lose because the government already had your women on its side. You know what I'm saying? The white feminists are nothing more than an extension of the white government anyway. So, now let's fast forward. Let's get to modern times. Now, as we know, the black community is a matriarch. You know what I'm saying? it's The black men basically don't have any power at all. You know what I'm saying? And that's why you have the SYSBM, Save Yourself Black Men. You know, black men responding to it by basically 
leaving the community. It's not their community to begin with anyway. It's a community run by the three, you know, the the government assistant programs that even to this day, I had a buddy of mine contact me, say, yo, they wouldn't offer his family welfare or Section 8, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Section 8 if the father was around. And now they don't do this to all communities. They don't do this to certain other races or communities, but the government still does it. Then you have child support. You know, basically the black man has no authority. And since the black man has no authority, he can't fully build any political representation. Now that's changing. uh, And I'll touch up on that, but that's usually the foreign blacks. But now why, where are we modern day? Now, modern day, what the black women didn't get is that by teaming up with the white government and teaming up with the white feminist, they've basically set themselves up to where they become the most undesirable and the most at risk for, uh, you know what I'm saying, you'll hear it in the black community, swirling or multiracial coupling, you know what I'm saying? Because what happens is since the black men had no political power or political, politically established, what you have is any other race, white, Asian, Chinese, uh, Arab, whatever you want to call it, any other race that gets involved with a black woman, they wreak all the issues that come with the fact that blacks have no political representation. I'll give you an example. So let's say an Asian man has a child with a black woman. Now that black, that child is born and, you know, predominantly he'll end up looking black and, you know, with some Asian features here and there. And the problem that comes with it, and even if it's a white man or whatever, the problem that comes with it is when the Asian man, unlike any other race of women, You know, since the black man is, you know, the most targeted and, you know, the least respected, uh, you know, most disposable man in America. You know, as you can see with all the killings where they use black men's deaths to front an agenda. I mean, George Floyd died and they passed a law to uh, stop racism on Asians. (laughs) Oh, man, you you can't write that. That's too funny. So a black man dies, and instead of the law being written that, hey, we need to to finally stop this racist BS, you know, when it comes to the political authority and cops and all that. No, we just use that black man's death to rile up the nation. Then we'll pass a law to protect all Asian people. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, it's been happening. I mean, if they didn't change the laws after the civil rights where blacks were getting hit by, you know, water holes and had dogs sicked on them, or even before then, after the end of slavery, or even before then, the list goes on. So what happens is when any other race of man, any other race that isn't Negro dates a black woman and has a child with them, now, what happens to this man is he, he obtains all the stress that a black father would have. Now he has to worry about his black children, especially his sons, when it comes to them driving around. So he technically has to be there for them. You know what I'm saying? He would have to be in the car with them if he's worried that they'll get pulled over or killed whatever, you know what I'm saying? He basically inherits all the problems that a black father, a Negro father would have. And why I say Negro, you know, it's like an African, if an African has a child here, not a, you know, not a, a, a black American, whatever. So he inherits all the issues. Okay. So let's say this Asian man, or let me change it. Let's say this white man is driving with his half white son. You know what I'm saying? They get pulled over if the cops, you know, hate his son because, you know, they have a problem because, you know, his son's black, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And he has, he tries to stick up for them. 
they might a just push him away and say hey man you know we we got beat on your son whatever they might kill his son or when his son gets a prison sentence uh whatever a political you know uh any issue his son will face all the issues that comes with being a black man you know what i'm saying so it basically makes any race of man you know any race of man that isn't black it makes no sense for that man to have a child with a black woman because he inherits all the issues that comes with being black that even he doesn't understand completely you know for example so if he's white asian indian arabic you know what i'm saying whatever and he has a child with a black woman he basically inherits all the issues the black man would face so even if his son's light skinned half half whatever he is he inherits all the issues and all the fears that a black man would have you know what i'm saying so in in essence basically since the black women you know in the 50s you know what i'm saying when they betrayed black men by aligning themselves with the uh, white feminist and the government, you know what I'm saying? As Tommy Sotomayor famously said that the black woman is the, I forget the, I think the agent, the agent to white supremacy, whatever it is. So the black women actually thought they were getting something, but in the long run, they basically limited all their options. They limited all of their options to date. A, they can't fully date a black man and be absolutely happy because since the black men have no political representation. Now, there's a difference between a foreign black man, like a, a foreign Negro, you know what I'm saying? Like an African, a Jamaican. They have an embassy. They have an embassy behind them, so... They get a, you know, if they stay close to their culture and their nationality, they they are implied more protection. You know what I'm saying? But but if a black woman basically gets with a, an, a, a you know, an American, a black American who was of slave ancestry here, basically she's not going to obtain a life where it's, complete happiness because since there's not enough black men with political representation and political power there's still risks there you know what i'm saying and then when it comes to other races she can't get access to any other race either because all these men would inherit all the racial issues that the black men were they in power were they to have political power and political representation they would have removed anyway. You know what I'm saying? They would have ended it anyway. So by black women, you know, the older generation of black women and the current generation that choose to side with the government, that means child support. That means, you know, any section eight where the father's kicked out. You know what I'm saying? Anything that basically divides from the black man and disrespecting the black man's authority they basically ensure that they will never, A, even with a black man, they'll never fully find happiness and complete comfort. There will always be that risk of authority. And then with any other race of men, they will go ignored beyond potential sexual escapades because that man will inherit all the issues that the black man still faces. Especially, for example, if a white man has a child with a black woman and that son is still, you know, dark skinned, but has, for example, you know, straighter hair, whatever. You know what I'm saying? He still inherits all the issues that a black father would have. But, you know, he doesn't come with that perspective in mind. So, you know, it, it becomes a true troubling sight. For any other race of man to get with a black woman. Now I had to break it down critically. Because a lot of people just say. Oh man the black women are least desired. 
blah, 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 you know, and, you know, they don't break it down critically. And another thing is, by black women basically obtaining absolute authority over the black community, you know what I'm saying, uh, when it comes to the eye of the government and the white feminists, you know what I'm saying, where they've gone to a point of self-destruction, you know what I'm saying, where they've become more masculine because they had to play that role in in basically removing the black men out of the picture. They had to become more masculine, more aggressive. Then you have the factor that since black men then checked them earlier on by protesting against the black women, you have black women that come into a relationship where they're wearing weaves, they're wearing, you know, fake wigs and all this stuff. Then it basically makes the experience, for example, if a white man's dating a black woman, rather than him dating a black woman, you know, touching her hair and, you know, actually experiencing the 100 percent difference of being with a black woman versus being with a white woman. He basically is dating a woman that admires the features of the white women he left behind. So she's wearing a wig. And those wigs, since they're not natural, that white man can't really touch it or, you know, sh have her shower with it, you know, go do a lot. Of, and then it, it's basically copying the texture of the women he left. Then, you know, the expenses that come with that. And, you know, the fact that he's dealing with a woman that's you know, used to be in a matriarchal society, she'll usually come with health amulets, health issues, or, you know, weight issues, or, you know, in America, black women are the most obese, you know what I'm saying, because they have, the men in their community have no authority at all, so what's happened is, you know, so when another race of man, A, he's dating, and that implies any man with straight hair, that means an Asian man, an Arab man, a uh, white man, uh, Indian man, Native American, any man with, where, you know, they genetically have straight hair. When they touch the, you know, the black woman, they don't get to fully experience that. They don't get to experience a black woman that is proud of her natural hair and happy to be black. You know what I'm saying? Loves her people and all that stuff. So, you know, she never hated her own men. You know what I'm saying? It, it's kind of like this, you know, uh, for example, when a white woman dates a black man, she doesn't hate her own people. So that black man goes into a relationship with her and he gets to experience her full naturalness. So, you know, her hair is straight. She's not, you know, using some type of she's not wearing fake nappy hair weaves. Uh, fake nappy hair wigs. She's basically not reminding him of the other race of woman he left behind. So, you know what I'm saying? You you get that feature. But basically, you know, in, in black women joining with the government and continuing to do so, they've basically increased their health health issues and they've basically made themselves in America completely, you know, the least desired because all that comes with them is risk. You get a woman that most part, like I said, wearing weave, wearing wigs that does not like her own features, that's seeking to emulate the features of all non-black women, which is Asians, whites, Native Americans, Indians, Brazil, straight hair. So she's trying to mirror that and spends a lot of money attempting to mirror those features. So she's basically in dating that other race of man, reminding him of what he left and the fact that he'd get a more natural, you know what I'm saying, a natural encounter with a woman, be her, for example, an Asian woman, let's say an Asian man, he could date a white woman that would have her natural straight hair or whatever. An Asian woman, natural straight hair, any woman that ain't black, it would all be natural. And then that racial woman doesn't have a history of hating their own self. You know what I'm saying? 
self-hate, low self-esteem, pro-inferiority. So, so in basically turning against her black man, the black women have basically set themselves up to be far worse of a liability than it comes to being with other races of women. You know what I'm saying? Because all that comes with it are the factors that remind them that the black men have no political power. You know, the Asian men have political power. You won't really hear cops pulling up on Asians, pulling up on Arabs, pulling up on Indians. It only happens to black men for the most part when it comes to the severity. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying white men don't get pulled over. I'm not saying none of that. You know what I mean? It's by the numbers. But when it happens to blacks, blacks have no political representation. So there's no real risk. You know what I'm saying? If a cop shoots a white, a black man, what does he have to fear? You know what I'm saying? The, there won't be really any political issues or even a judge since the majority of judges aren't black. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have to worry about it when it comes to the economical advances and political representation. So, you know, a black man is the most disposable man in America. The most disposable. You know what I'm saying? Because he has no political ties. He has no, you know, judicial ties. You know what I'm saying? To, you pull over a white man, you, oh shit, he might be a judge, his son, he might be, his cousin might be a cop, his uncle might be a, a politician, a congressman, so there's a risk implied. You pull over a black man, um, I mean, odds are he doesn't have any judges in his family, he doesn't have any political power or nothing, so this is light work, you know what I mean? This is an easy one, so... You know, that's what happens. Now the now the other thing from talking to get on the subject with the white with the black man is that, you know, after thinking about what that subs, you know, subscriber commented, you know what I'm saying, it technically it doesn't. It doesn't make sense in America for a black man to basically if you think about it and do the math you know, just math alone, it doesn't make sense that a black man would marry a white woman, if you think about it, because he's given her resources, for example, he's given her resources that her culture and race already have. So he's basically putting more funds, even if she's not a bad person, whatever, None of that matters, you know what I'm saying? But by political representation and, you know, by racial politics, you know, him investing in her or starting a family, whatever, he's basically, again, putting his money into that white community and white system, you know what I'm saying? So from that subscriber's notion, it made a lot of sense when a subscriber told me, yo, it don't make sense that a black man would marry a white woman because he's literally putting money back into that same predominantly, you know, white government that's the majority of his problems. You know what I'm saying? So he marries a white woman. He's basically putting more funds into that system. You know what I mean? You know, he's still putting more money into that. So that made a lot of sense. That kind of made me think. And I'm like, man, it makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. You know, not that, you know, if you watch this channel, you already know where I stand on marriage in America. You know, marriage in America, you might as well just be walking in a, in a damn pool of crocodiles that just ate and just hope they're not, not one of them will bite you. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, basically, I mean, from what that subscriber said, you know, he added a lot of math. You know, it makes sense. You know, where he said, yo, if you date as a black man, if you're dating or marrying a white woman, you're just putting money back into that same system that's, you know, persecuting you and attacking you. 
You know what I'm saying? So it makes more sense if the black man, if he's going to do that, if he's going to get married or whatever, it makes sense that he wouldn't, he wouldn't, of course, black men, over 40% aren't marrying black women anyway. They're not even having children. You know, it's over, it should be over 45% by now. And then he shouldn't have any marriage with white women either. Now, other women, the doors open. Asian, Indian, you know, you know, uh, it's Latino. Any woman that's basically not white, you know what I'm saying? It makes sense because, you know, you pull over a Latino person, you know what I'm saying? I'd say a Mexican you know, they got some political representation here and there. You know what I mean? It's different. They're not the sole majority that's creating the issue. That's This is why there's a major problem. And I got to do this video to probe the difference between the black manosphere and the white manosphere. A lot of times, the, the you know, the white guys will say, hey, man, it's the same. We're dealing with the same things. No, we're not. There's a major difference between the black man and the white man, you know, there's a major difference when it comes to the political spectrum, you know what I'm saying, and political and economical representation, you know what I mean, this is why if you're a white friend, and you know what I'm saying, this is why black people will always say, hey man, you know what I mean, instead of them, instead of, like, you'll notice when you talk to black people, they'll say, yo man, get home safe, man, you know what I'm saying, Get home safe while a black, while a white person will basically tell you most of the time, I'll see you tomorrow, peace, you know. See you, when I see you, uh, call, you know, call me maybe if you get home. But they don't imply there's any danger. A black person, if you talk to a black person, they'll always imply there's danger there. Where they'll say, hey man, get home safely, be careful, you know what I mean? There's always an implication of danger. I'll touch up on that later, but. Basically, man, when the black women of the old, the 50s and today, still continue to invest in the system, they've basically limited their potential with not only their own men, but extreme, but ex, but with any other man of any other racial group. You know what I'm saying? That's why you have a great divide. And that's why you see a lot more black women are obese and out of shape, you know what I mean? And then you got to see how the white feminists treat them, where you watch films and, you know, what's shocking is that, and how you can tell there's a racial issue is that you'll watch a film or a TV show and they automatically put weave and wigs on the black women, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't consider that a problem. They don't consider that a problem that you're putting wigs and weaves on a woman, basically implying that, you know what I'm saying, her natural features are a problem. You know what I'm saying? That you're not you're not you're not uh basically you know what I mean, you're not you're not seeing that as a problem, you know, so that's what you see, man. You know what I mean? That's what you see that there's a major problem that they're so comfortable. To, you know, the white media and the white feminists are so comfortable. They know that black women want to be them so bad that they'll openly have shows casted where they'll perm. These tell they have these women hair permed. You know what I'm saying? Have them wearing a wig. You know what I'm saying? They don't even notice that's a problem. And these are the same white women and white films and TV shows that will say, love yourself and appreciate your differences. And they'll love yourself and appreciate your differences. And, you know, we're, we're, we're all human. Okay, if we're all human, how come you got this black woman wearing a wig? You know what I'm saying? How come you have her wearing a wig? And, you know, all this other crap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're all human. Love yourself. We're, we're no different. If we're no different, how come you have... How come the white women on the movies 
they're not wearing a nappy, nappy haired wig or, uh, you know, getting their hair curly to look more black. <laughs> so basically, man, by black women aligning themselves to the the white feminist in the government, they've basically placed their future in any man that interacts with them in a in an issue, you know, a major problem. You know what I'm saying? Because she'll give birth to a child that resembles the persecution and the lack of representation. You know what I'm saying? If an Asian man has a child with a white girl, you know, that kid gets all the benefits. That kid's going to be white and Asian features. You know, Asian man has a child with a Mexican, you know what I mean? That kid will be a Mexican with some Asian features. Basically, any any woman that can give birth to a child that doesn't look black, said Asian man or other races of men don't have to worry about the issues that come with it. But if they're looking at a black woman and ha trying to have a child with that black woman, they have to worry far more. There's a higher risk of them losing their child or there's more, there's racial problems that come with it. There's all these issues that with other races of women, they wouldn't have to worry about, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's one of the major problems. You know, so to me, man, it's it's uh, there's it's a lot, man. There's a lot you got to think about. And then like I said with what that subscriber said as a black man, you know, what I'm saying, yes, some will say, well, I'm dating this white woman. And, you know, what I mean, I get access to her, her white family, this and that. But in actuality, she gets far more access than you will ever get by just being white by default. And then you investing your money in her basically further increases and puts funding into the white system to begin with. So, you know, what I mean, it's just a matter of simple, simple basics, really. If you are not treated equally under the political and under the authoritative you know, police and all that stuff, then anything less than that is an attack. You know, anything less than that is an attack. So, you know, a black man, really, in all honesty, you know, uh, of course, black men by over 40% aren't having children with black women. So, you know, that means they've, you know, they're walking away or and all that stuff. So, you know, it's S-Y-S-B-M, you know what I mean? So they're traveling and all that stuff. But basically, to tell you the truth, black men in America... When it comes to having a, you know, if they're going to do it in America, their options are literally to avoid, of course, the white woman, the start of family and their own black women. You know what I'm saying? Due to uh, the, the black women, when it comes to their pro inferiority issues, their alignment with the white feminists and the white government, you know what I'm saying? Because in all honesty, you know. A black woman that puts a black man on child support, you know what I'm saying? That can that will sick the very same government that's trying to kill him. You know what I mean? It's it's it it's super hypocritical. You can't say, "Oh, I want to, I want to advance my black people," yet at the same time you're sicking the white government on it. You know what I mean with child support? You know what I'm saying? They, the line must be drawn. So, to me, man, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. There's a lot to unpack, a lot to think about. But this is basically why black women in America are basically the least desired. Because everything they've done has led up to it. You know what I'm saying? From aligning with the government to shut down their men and limit their men's uh, political aspirations and economical aspirations. You know what I'm saying? So, it and what that has done is it's left all these issues to any other race of man that will date a black woman or have a child with her. Because if he does, 
he will face all the issues that a black man would face raising a child. You know what I'm saying? Well, this has been Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. Also, if you want to look uh, further on this type of video, look up my video, Liberal Masters. Liberal Masters, I go into that. You'll see I cover the relationship between the, the white feminist and the black woman. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot to unpack. But, uh, you know, the truth, as I said, man, the truth isn't about your feelings. Truth isn't about happiness and all this crap. The truth is just that. It's the truth. And, you know, that's what I'm dropping. The whole truth and nothing but the whole truth. And it's, uh, all right. Peace.